Oh my god. It's a just it's just Shelly Labs, by the way. I got schooled in, in Axpona. If you didn't see my footage, there's a live stream saved. That's the Axpona that I had to dub it over because there was too many rooms playing music and I wasn't gonna edit. <laughs> edit. Um, if you want to see it uncut and hear all the conversations I'm having with people, uh, Patreon and subscribers to have that. It's in the Sound Demo Oasis, the uncut Axpona footage. But for those of you who don't know, apparently I've been saying Gishelli Labs and it's just Shelly Labs. Because Gino and Sherry are the husband and wife team to start. All right, whatever. This is also not the Arkle 3. It's the Archel for their daughter, Rachel, who's lovely. And I finally got to use a K wallpaper because guess what? Made in America. And K is American, even though she was drawn in Japan. Just don't question things. Um, so this, I'm going to call out. All right, this is going to sound like I'm full of shit. This is... Gishelli Labs' first grown-up product. And they've done tons of things over the years. And we've come from, like, this guy who's sitting on my desk right now, the little, the little balanced only in, balanced only out, Erish 1. There's an Erish 2. We got the Archel 1 and 2. And this is the 2.5 XL. And now we have the Archel 3 Pro. And this is a collaboration, not with me, but with Sparkos Labs. Because when they announced they were going to have a collaboration and they couldn't tell me who it was, I was like, oh, shit. Is it DMS? Is it Marcus Brownie? Who the fuck did it? And it's Sparkos. And that's like that's a company that, that sells op amps. If you don't know who Sparkos Labs are, Sparkos Labs sells very, very nice like operational amplifiers. That's the thing that you pop in like you want to swap different op amps in amps. So they have some in here. And they're the size. They're like raviolis they're like an inch by an inch if you don't know if you're metric that's like 2.2 centimeters by they're big they're big fat pancakes in here so Gishelli labs and sparkos labs collaborated on an amplifier and i'm not saying this is their first grown-up product because of that it's because they finally this is the oh my god did you see the volume knob size look at it oh it's so big that's what she said um so here's the the OG, the, the still available. Here's the thing. This is out as of right now. Today's like May 2nd. It's early May. And they told me they wanted to launch it in early May. But they've taken this thing to so many shows. And they've let so many people hear it. And there's, those people take a business card. And those people keep emailing and saying, can you put me on the list? I want to buy one. Can you put me on the list? Can you buy one? That their like, soft open has become like, it's like a fucking mystery now. Because, I mean, I want to, like, look to see if there's a landing page. And you know what I see instead of a landing page? Back order news. <laughs> it's like an audiophile uh, news site. As of April 20th, which it's, that's like 12 days ago, um, the new assembly line is in place and running. So they're giving you actual updates for what they're doing. Because they're a small company in Florida. They have all this stuff in an office and they're doing all this by hand. Our, our board production is way up. It's good. We are now cutting through the back order list as much at a much faster rate and hope to be caught up soon. That said, and that over this is going to bring you uh, flashbacks, not of Vietnam, but of the Argons. Um, if you want an aluminum case, which is this style, which they have, you know, actually, I should have got out the colored DAC. Fuck. I am running this off of Gishelli DAC, but we'll talk about that in a bit. If you want an aluminum case, three to four week back order. That's a month. If you want the wood case... Because the way the wood cases work is these aren't the extremely high-end grumpy goose ones that are like carved, which I don't have one yet. And when I send me one, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, their dad actually was putting these together. Like, so he had to go and pr find the wood and build. He's assembling all of them there. And he was using this this dovetail joint here. And he was building, and this is like, ah. Oh. So that's an eight to 10 week wait. 10 weeks. That's like a trimester, I think. So with the new amps to speed up production, they've gone from a dovetail to a straight joint, but they're doing like this sort of patterning. And it's like, oh my God, butcher block, touch me. Touch my butcher block, please. So possibly not as strong in case you need to use this as a leveraging point or, or something. But, oh my God, like it, it stops with this weird, there was a weird patterning and you get like a feel on top that they had to get out. This is just, oh. 
Still the plexi front and plexi rear. That was what Gishelli Labs was known for. Um, where's my other Gishelli stuff? It's it's around. It's around. We have got. It's, let me just give you the basic rundown. Zeos timestamps. Timestamps, by the way, in the description. And Patreon for ten dollars a month to get to talk to me directly in the ten dollar chat. Just remember that. We have RCA inputs coming from. Actually, these RC inputs are coming from the Rebel Amp as it's pre-out as a Class A. Just wanted to try something. Really not a huge difference with the Rebel Amp being a preamp in it. We've got these XLRs coming from a experimental Gishelli's Labs DAC, which is not... Oh, i got to get you back K. I'm being real mean. Which is not, so to speak, a collaboration. As much as it was like, hey, can you build this? And over the course of a year or so, they built it. And it's, it's down there, and it runs my whole desk, essentially. I'll, I'll pull that out for a video soon. Um, I, with the current back orders, it's not like if I show it off, they're going to, people, are, like, it's not going to be out for a bit. Calm yourself. Um, anyway, so this is coming directly from the Gishelli's uh, distribution DAC. This is coming from the distribution DAC through the Rebel Amp into it. And then these RCAs. Um, which are all, by the way, world's best RCAs. If you want to link Zeos, link to his world's best in the comment. Everything here is world's best. Um, these are leaving and going into the... It's like modern art. That's... There's some perfection happening right here. And these are going into the Cali IN5, which are my studio monitors that are sitting there. Um, so it does have a pre-out internally to pre-out through speakers or things. Only issue is you can't disable... I really don't want to touch this. I feel like I'm going to be able to hear people's minds and thoughts if I leave it. That was weird. Um, there's no switch to turn off the output. So I'm using this kilowatt edge. So if I put back on well, whatever's playing right now, hold on. If I hit that button, now there's power going to the studio monitors. Steve Strauss, Just Like Love. Mm, from Stockfish Records. Um, I will say that we'll get to the front and then I'll explain that all the things that happen from high low gain to the tone controls also pass through the pre out. So I've actually got a bass boost on those right now um, on the low gain setting. So it's. Ooh, that's sweet. Anyway, back to the front. Back to the front. All right. By the way. I just want to point out, I've got three headphones currently on the desks and a set of IMs. Because I have to show something while I'm doing these reviews. Obviously, if you've been watching in ear fetish or any reviews in this channel for the past two months, this unit has been here. This is actually a hand soldered unit before they got the machining set up to tooling to just do it automatically. So this one, this one's got some craft and sweat in it. Not that it's, and it actually makes it worse because when the machine puts it down, it's usually perfect. So they're like, if it breaks, let us know. Um, but the the four things I took out, Argon, T60 Argon, because you kind of have to. Um, the Abyss Dianas, because Abyss, they tried to contact Abyss and say, hey, can you send us a headphone so we could test it with our amp? And Abyss was like, no, your headphone amp is stupid. So I'll test it with it. And it'll work fine, by the way, Abyss. It was, you should have probably let them, but just don't be dicks, Abyss. Um, and then I pulled out a random one from the table over there. It's like, well, it's not audiophilia, but it's got anime stickers on it because I love it so fucking much, Harmonic Dine Athena. And I could have, this could have been the Ghost or the 60s or even the goddamn Blonde B50s. I, people have been like, Zeus, I'm not listening to you ever again because you made me buy the Blonde B50s. I still like them. I don't know, there's just something about them that it must be like, there must be a frequency that I just can't hear that just kills people sometimes. So if you bought the B-50s and you hate me for it, I apologize. I like them still. Um, but I pulled out the Harmonic Dynathenas, which are like a $200 headphone. And with the bass and treble control on this, and this, and the Sparko op amps, because we've got to talk about sound and shit, there's just a thing that these do that it's like, mm. before we move any further, because you know that Gishelli Labs has kind of been like the, bu like, here's the thing. They're not just the budget kings. They're, they need to stop being the budget kings. It's the same reason there's an eight, it's eight to 10 a week wait is because their stuff has always been relatively too cheap. I think we all feel that, right? Like, it's kind of like an unspoken truth. It's like, hey, did you buy the new Gishelli Lab? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. How much did you pay for it? 300 for the whole stack for two units. Made in America. All right. 
Seems a little cheap. Yeah, it is a little cheap. Oh, fuck. And that's why there's a 10-week wait. This unit, because of the Sparkos op amps, and because they have to do the new thing with the boards and there's multiple, $600. Or roughly, I think it's, I think she told me, I think she told me $599. So it's not on the page, and I couldn't find it in our chat. She might have said it to me with her mouth in person. But that is the correct price for an American-made wood box, two watt per channel headphone amp that also has line. It's the right price. All right? And, you know, I, I'm a, obviously a Gishelli Labs fucking fanboy. And I always am telling them constantly, you need to charge more so you could stay in business. That's another thing. Like, with the Argons, he needed to charge more so he had less of a weight and he could stay in business. Now with this new headphone he's got coming out, which, by the way, that's sort of, like, not delayed, but he's still going through different gold. He's like, yes, well, the German gold is too high impedance. That's how Ryan at Mod House is. He's not crazy. He's just thorough. Um, he needs to charge more for, like, the new planars because those things are stupid. Um, let's look at the front. Remember when we were looking at this unit and I was going to talk about it, but I'm too excited. I'm like a dog chasing a car. I wouldn't know what to do if I caught it. Um, real buttons. Not not these buttons anymore, which would, another reason why the money is the money is because this is cheap because it's just a, dim, a, a pin switch on a board straight through a piece of Lexan. And it's got the LEDs showing. And this is an actual push button with a light ring around it that is connected to the board and relays. Oh my God, it's like real life. I should have cleaned this. I've been touching it a lot. Actually, this has traveled with me. This was the one that I brought to um, New York Can Jam and left it at the Taconi table for the whole day. And everyone was like swarming around it. So we get four buttons on top, power, tone, input, and gain. Um, if you hold power, it turns off pops the speakers a little bit like not violently but like okay I correct myself it does pop that violently I'll ask them if they're going to put a muting circuit in because again this was a hand soldered one and not the one that they're pumping out currently that was a bit of a snap so power with light around the ring very cute um pressing the power button does change just like all the Gishelli lab stuff there's an led inside that changes rgb colors yay colors problem with this one is there's so much stuff and wires and now there's a base and treble knobs and this this knob that you can barely see in like through it and so changing the color from blue to yellow to green to red to off to white to teal to purple whatever the hell the other colors are is like kind of lost back there like if you're in a completely dark room maybe but I would like to see them adjust that. Maybe put it up on a pedestal and shine it forward. If you're gonna do the light thing, if you're gonna keep doing the light thing, do the light thing like fully do the light thing. Um, so that's what the power button does. It makes pops and turns it on and off. Honestly, I just wouldn't turn it off. Let me, let me this is a little bit of knowledge that it took me years to know this and I wanna pass it along. Um, leaving something on usually doesn't kill it. Turning it off and then on and then off and then on is what kills it. And I'll explain why real quick. This is for anyone who owns any electronics and things like this. This is why security monitors last like 30 years. The heat change from going from warm to cold, expansion and contraction weakens solder joints and things. And when you do it 10 times a day or two times a day or five times a week, that's what breaks a thing. So if your unit isn't going to use a ton of power, and I think this actually, can I tell what this is using? I don't have my kilowatt here to test. It's there, but it's not plugged in. Just leave it on, especially if that pop is going to continue because that was scary as shit. So I would literally never turn it off. Pl plug it in, turn it on. It doesn't get warm, even close to warm. You'd have to have it playing and plugged in and up to even generate any heat, and you're probably not gonna do that while you're sleeping. So yeah, I would leave it on. So you get your four controls, power, tone, input, and gain. Tone, if it's off, means these controls do nothing. And if you put it on, now the tone controls are active and you get treble and bass. Um, if I had to critique them, it would be this. They do remarkable things. 
I'm so happy that they're on this because I, I get so many amplifiers. And like some of the SMSL stuff, if you go through a menu, you could raise the treble and bass, but it's never good. Like you can never quite do anything with that. And it's so refreshing to have a bass and treble knob. Because here's the thing, I've been using this thing for weeks, fucking months. I have to close my fucking thing. Hold, please. It's gonna bother me forever. Um, I've been using this thing for months and I haven't been able to use the bass and treble knob. Because if I'm reviewing IMs on Eater Fetish, which is my other channel, I can't go and bass boost and treble drop or anything. I've got to just be like, all right, this type of amplifier versus this type of amplifier, how is the IM responding? But now that it's the review, like I could actually sit here and use all the features, I fucking love it. I give that shit like a one o'clock on the bass knob and I, I try, it, it notches into center, which I kind of am against because since we have a tone control where you can turn it completely off, you really don't need it to lock to the center because it makes it hard to go like 1% more treble. It wants to fall back to zero. Um, but I was giving it just as little treble as I can actually get the knob to stay and just like a one o'clock bass boost. And it is the right bass boost. I don't know what the exact frequency like graph would look like with the bass boost, but it's the right amount. It's just bass sub bass. It doesn't bleed up into the mid range. The treble, I'm, I'm just barely touching it on some things. I will say, I think it has too much of a range. Like, you, you know when you play with a TV, if you're like, I need to adjust the color on this. I personally would always hit the color if it's at 50, I'd bring it all the fucking way up to 100 and it'd be like, oh my God. And then I'd bring it all the way down to zero. And if it doesn't turn to black and white, then your range adjustment is stupid. The problem with this is, the bass and treble go from, oh my god, that's so anemic, I can't hear any bass, to I blew something up. So they, they could probably reduce this like 50% of the range and it would still be like plenty. So the treble is basically like, I want to I sing karaoke, turn the treble down, and you can't hear mono anymore. You can't hear anything vocals. So it's a very high range uh, tone control, but it's in the right area. So it's half good, half bad. I would be okay if they lightened it up. Like, I don't mind if a bass boost can just, like if I turned it halfway, was just like a subtle, like mm, thumping more. And then if you cranked it all the way, you get like a, a real bass boost. This is a real bass boost at one o'clock. And it's just, uh, I could do it with, with music. We could play some music. Do I have anything that'll actually not get me arrested for playing on the internet? Um anything here does anything exist mozart it's in my test waves folder let's see if mozart works so we're going to have the speakers on that's really not a bass test song but all right no bass all the bass all the treble no treble you could hear the treble just away away thoughts away That's bass all the way up. It's neutral bass. Hold on, we'll neutral everything. Let me see what's... Now all the bass. Now none of the bass. <laughs> it's like off. It just turns the bass off. So yeah, bass and treble, super fucking love having them. Just be gentle with them. Just, just, just like a lady, just beep and then you just add it in. And it's fun to play with on the speakers for certain, because this area is garbage for listening to speakers, by the way. You would think that in like a corner with all this stuff to breaking up the reflections and the padded ceiling and the openness to the back for no reflections, it'd be great. I've never had speakers sound good here, but you throw a little bit of bass boost on there and maybe a little bit of treble, which I could do probably with switches in the back and it's just, yeah, it's better. I could put on ghost data, here we go, let's, destroy the speakers okay no that's gonna literally break them okay stop anyway we've talked about the tone controls now um input is the only thing that will bother some people because you're either going to be one of those people who doesn't care if all the lights match or don't like obviously if it's on the power light has to be there and if you turn that one on you have the tone controls lit up and if you turn this one on xlr is selected because the input is lights off, RCA lights on XLR. 
It's not as hard as figuring out the. I had some some PTSD problems with the the selection of the, the lights, the lights on the thing, the lights in the Shelly Labs. What are you? What am I turning on? Oh God, is that one the same? Uh, I'm I'm literally William Shatner from Airplane Two. The blinking and the beeping and the blinking. Um, so yeah, it's much easier to understand now that they have buttons. Um, so just input, input, and then gain is low or high. Here's my talk about the high and low gain. This is only a two watt, only a two watt unit. But Gishelli Lab stuff does things in a weird way. Like Ryan's new Mod House planar needs to be on the LA90 on high gain at like three quarters to work. Or on the little Arish at halfway on high gain. What the fuck does that even mean? I don't know what it means. I don't know what any of this means. It's more voltage is what it means. These actually put out more voltage on top of the amperage to calculate the wattage. They amplify differently a little bit. And on certain headphones, it just takes full advantage of that, like the new Mod House planar. And other things, it's just sort of like meh. Like I had the, these are my, these are actually the prototype Kinera Nana Z2. And if you don't know, I have a nearly thousand dollar IEM collab. This is an actual collab. And this is not the finish they come in. Look how cool the fucking flames were. And they're like, no, 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 we're not actually doing that. That was just a test set we just sent you with the, with the tune in it. And I'm like, you're a bitch. Um, but yeah, thank you to Kinera for helping me out with the Z-Tune edition. I just wish it had cool flames. So I was testing this and I couldn't leave it on low gain. I had to put it on high gain. And those do not need high gain on any other amplifier, but they needed high gain on this. In fact, I was even ditching putting high gain on for these Harmonic Dynathena and they're not hard to do. And then I was running, obviously these all needed high gain. So it's just some things just don't and some things do. And let me show you the exact range of the high low gain because that's going to be important. We're going to shut off. We're going to shut off the speakers because we're on high gain now, which now makes the volume control more sensitive for the line out. We just we don't want to blow things up. So you could hear the headphones. We're going to shut off tone controls. Input doesn't matter right now. Loud. Loud. It's almost a 180 degree change. So if you're listening on low gain and you're getting near the end of the volume travel and you decide to try high gain, turn that motherfucker down 180 degrees because that is a huge jump. Huge. Huge. Um, so you got to just... That's where the high, that's why the low gain is like the low gain is for extremely sensitive things. I I didn't pull out like the uh well I did but not during this video. But like extremely sensitive IMs you're going to keep it on low gain. Extremely extremely easy to drive headphones, which these aren't really and you know no, these certainly aren't, but extremely easy to drive stuff is like low gain is all day all you need. But this sucker, I'm like nearly at the top. Or I switch it to high gate and I'm barely even breaking 10 o'clock. So take your pick. What do you want to listen with? Um, I did not hear any noise floor at all using these IMs. And I think I heard a little bit of a, of a whine when I was using the uh, Dunu Zen Pros. Just like maxed out high gain. I could hear something. So is it, it's not the blackest of black things, but that's not what you're going for. Because now we have to talk about sound. Um... It is only a quarter inch out. It's not balanced. If you want it to be 4.4, go buy yourself one of these from DD Hi-Fi. All right? And get a quarter inch to your 4.4. Because then you could just be like this. And it's like, oh, now it's got a 4.4 out. The Arish 3, when the Arish 3 falls out of the sky, I will run to catch it. This, as a quarter inch, because that's the thing, like the Rebel Amp, only quarter inch. I've got the AAA one here, only quarter inch. A lot of these are just strictly unbalanced. And for this attempt, for this with the Sparkos things, it's perfect. We don't need more right now. This is good enough. Um, let's plug in something stupid. 
and hard to drive. Well, let me show you that it can do it, even though they wouldn't. Mm. All right, so we're going to, I'm just going to balance these out to zero in case tone controls are off. We're on input RC. Actually, you know what? We're going to go to the RCA input on high gain. So now I'm, so if I, if I push this up a little bit higher than that, now noon. So yeah, I'd say that runs the uh, Abyss Diana. Phi, no, not Phi. Is it Phi? Are you the Phi or is the Phi the old one? I can never remember. They don't write the name of the model on here. Like it's going to ruin it. But Diana V2, no, it's the Phi, right? Yeah, this one, the color. Well, I'll link it in the description. Anyway, so yeah, no, I'm just just jumping through right now. It has no problem powering these. All right, we should probably talk about sound, actual Zeos timestamp again. So when I was using this just to use it for my uh, headphones and IM reviews, specifically the IM reviews, this was like a staple. It was to sit between what I thought was absolutely neutral, like LA90 power overload, and I have the TA22 hybrid tube. So the hybrid tube obviously has a very tube sound going for it. And this is a very clean sound going for it. And then I've, I've dabbed around with like the Wild Love and Topaz. If you don't watch the In-Ear Fetish channel, you should. But this sat on the desk, and this was always the middle ground. This wasn't the softest, warmest thing. I didn't want it to be like, like muddied, like class A overload. I didn't want that. But I also didn't want it to be the super hyper neutral, which is what like the AAA one is. It's just like bland, but that's as clean as clean gets. This sits perfectly in a space where, all right, I'm not gonna say Rupert Nev, but I that's one of the best amplifiers I've ever heard was the big Rupert Nev console. It was like $5,000, like legitimately sounded great. The only thing I think that competes with this as far as what's coming out of it is the uh, the new Hi-Fi Min EF600, which is, ironically, about the same price. Um, but one's made in China and one's made in Florida. Now, which place you'd rather go to at night, that's up to you. Take a baseball bat either way. Um, because this has, like, something... It's just... It's one of those things where, like, I could put as many waifus in the background as I want, and I could bullshit about and tell stories about, fucking this time I went to Michigan, but... It's a hard to describe thing. The sound is like clean and clear, but not abusively clear. Like I, there's something, that's a word. You know, if you've been in this game long enough, you've listened to something that's abusively clear. Like you plug your headphone that you know and play music that you know, and you're like, ooh, ooh. You just like, it doesn't taste right. It's like when they use sea salt, but instead of sea salt, it's just seaweed instead of salt because they're trying something healthy and new. And it's like, this is not right. This is not right. This tastes right. This is proper sea salt. I don't think anyone's ever described an amplifier like that. You're welcome. Like the, the bells ring just enough and they don't hurt. I don't have the tone controls on. And that's one of the things I like to do is tone control on and then just like bass boost the Dianas because I'm an idiot. Set this to shuffle. Ooh, decisive battle. I don't know if you can hear this. Oh my God, there's the treble, just that little, there's the smallest amount you can add treble. And that's not the amp's fault that like it needs that. That's just, you know, maybe these aren't perfect headphones after all, and you could use a little bit of fuckery. And it's got fuckery built in right there. In fact, you, eh, fuckery off, fuckery on. Just rename that. If I get a custom one of these, I don't want to say tone, I want to say fuckery. So that I could just turn on the fuckery knobs and you could just fuck with it until I like it. Why do my videos get demonetized? Wait, they don't. I'm above that shit. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a stellar, <laughs> even more bass. God, the Dianas with more bass. 
Can I even just... Mm. And that's the thing about having this amp and doing this review. I am so happy I get to listen to all these things that I've been plugging into it for weeks and weeks, but actually get to tone control it and turn them up and pay attention. I've been trying to ignore it. The way Zeos does his things, he, he gets a new thing. Like, I got, look, I got Violetric stuff over there on the on the chest freezer. The audio file chest freezer. And I'm just going to throw it on the desk and pretend it's been here the whole time and just use it. And do IMs in it and do headphones on it and blah, 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 blah. And if I notice it's good, then I'll pay attention. That's what I did with this. I just threw it in the mix. I fucking put it on the desk. I don't care. I don't fucking care. Throw it out. So I don't care. It has to make me care. Everything that's here showed up. I treated it like dirt and it had to crawl out of that pit in front of me and impress me. That's everyone. You're all garbage. Climb out of the pit and show me what you're made out of. And these, this is made out of fucking, I wish, I wish I could just, you know what? I might just, just fly up to DMS and be like, yo, DMS, bring me over to the uh, abyss guys. I want them to hear this. That shouldn't work as well as it does on something like this. So I get why they would be like skeptical, but fuck, you're an American made headphone company. You got an American made amplifier, Kith. Something else that's slightly more Chinese American is the is the, the, the T, T60s. Now I've got the bass boost still on and the gain up. This is a little bit harder to drive. Never mind. I didn't, I didn't mean that at all. If I if I run it on the XLR and not the RCA with a little bit extra boost, I have to turn it up to like three o'clock, but it still runs it. It's not the best I've ever heard these. I think these sound better on the balanced Arish, even though that like the two watts should be very similar. But it's just there's something about this amp. There's something about the Sparkos op amps and whatever they're doing to. Because, I mean, if I literally sat you down and you're like, hey, describe what this op amp's doing, you're going to be like, what? Because it's just the smallest little details that it's changing how the processing of the sound and the warmth and the well, the frequency ranges, how they blend with each other. It's fucking... Cr That's shit you could actually hear. I've swapped op amps and heard a difference. Asking me to describe the difference... Nah, bro. I rather take up like learning how to tattoo and do full back tattoos in prison, because just anyone who says they can describe it probably can't, because it's just there's no words. It's just like describing a feeling. Like stick your hand in this box and describe this thing, and it's like, oh my god, it's so. There's only so many words in the dictionary for describing things, and there's not enough to describe the, the minute differences in sound. That's why I like doing this job, because I could say almost fucking anything, and it's going to be a better description of what I'm hearing than using words. Like, it has to be like an emotion. It's got to be like, this is 97 um, infant tears um, in a burrito and then cast into the sun. That's what it sounds like. It's, ah, uh, ah. Uh. 97 infant tears in a burrito in the sun. That's that's what it sounds like. Do I like the Gishelli, G Gishelli, not Gishelli, the Gishelli, Archel, not not Arkel, Archel for Rachel. I got you, girl. Um, do I like the, the thing? Fuck yes, I like this. Fuck, did I say fuck enough in this video? Yes. Do I wish it had other features? Yes. But that's the thing. They need to sell this first. And then get feedback from people that are not just me. And then when the Archel 4 comes out, or the 3.5, 3 I don't know how they're going to work that out. But those features will come out. This is a small company. It's all family run. There's like one or two employees I think that they hired that aren't members of their family. And I'm just looking to give them the biggest foot up I can because I want to see the next thing. If you haven't seen the speaker amp, again, check out the... Uh, Axpona footage there at the end of the first day. So it's like an hour into the video. I get to the uh, the Giselli Labs room. And they've got a, a speaker amp that's like $2,000. Because it fucking has to be. Because Grumpy Goose is doing his thing. You, you don't know the Grumpy Goose. When you go to the site, you'll see the Grumpy Goose. He hand carves that like a psychopath. You want to talk about psychopaths? Him. 
I thought he was machining that shit and then just smoothing it out. No, 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 no. He's hand carving it. And like absolutely worth $600 for what you're getting. You get to have a badge of honor and a giant bumper sticker. And I think they're going to throw in some, some other things and be like, you purchased a Gishelli Labs product and you should be proud of that. This is what, like a 39 minute review? Way too long. I like to keep these reviews super short, but I'm passionate about this because I know the people. You could say I'm biased. Fine. Whatever. Say it. Don't listen to this review at all. Wait till other people have heard it. Other people that don't know them and haven't met them and don't talk to them and get sent to Munich with sponsorship money from Gishelli Labs. Yeah, Gishelli Labs. Did, I, they were the first person I mentioned I was going to Munich and like, oh, we put some money in your account. Boom. And I'm like, uh, because they know that this stuff is going to have to get out there to those people and I'm going to bring it to them. So if you like, if you just for the wood alone, you're probably going to be interested in buying it. And this is the, this is basic bitch wood. Get to the fucking grumpy goose wood. That's when you get to the crazy wood. Although I'm kind of partial to the cutting board. I would actually probably seal this and try to cut cheese on it. Anyway. Wallpaper in the Horde. Link to this. If it's fucking... If you're a patron watching this, by the way, patrons for $5 a month get to see these reviews early. If you're a patron seeing this review early and it's not on the website, just keep checking because eventually this video will come out live and it'll hopefully have a link because, I mean, a link to buy it would be nice, but even the like the specs like laid out would also be nice. So I'm going to message... Uh, Sherry, who's the, the Gino and the, the Sherry part of the, the Sher uh, Shelly, whatever. Um, her name isn't Shelly, which would make more sense if it was Gino and Shelly, then it would be just Shelly. But it's just Sherry. It uh, doesn't rhyme as much. Anyway, links to this. Links to the headphones. Links to this interesting mouse pad by Tilted Nation. Don't know what that is, but here it is. I just thought it looked cool. It was like a visor CG person. Um, that's in the wallpaper hoard. Uh, thank you to all my patrons and subscribe star subscribers. You keep this channel going and me sane. And you cover the costs of going to Munich that haven't been covered by everyone else. And pay for things that are arbitrary and probably delicious. Um, but I'm done. You're done. We're done. Thank you. Like, favorite, subscribe, all this bullshit. Face reveal, pretty much guaranteed at Munich. Because it's been 10 years. Officially in May. Now. May. 10 years. 2013, my first review of the Vanatu T1, which was a video, but not really like a Z review, it's not a head cam. I was carrying the camera around, but I'm counting that as my first video. So yeah, I think I'm fucking done hiding this ugly mug of mine. I'm gonna bring it out, and then I'm gonna get all, all the bitches. There's gonna be none left for you guys, I'm so sorry. Anyway, I'm done. I'm going to now put this where it belongs, where I think I had it on top of here. Or I'll rearrange this because it stays on my desk until it's dead or till I find something better. Bye.